This is Sam in Billings, Montana. I'm a wood turner and an artist, and I promote and share wood turning through my weekly YouTube videos. I'm also a robust lathe dealer, so if you're interested in the finest American-made lathe, contact me and I'll answer any of your questions. So, thank you. All right, now the finishes we apply to a piece of wood, whether we're doing a woodworking project or wood turning project, it either enhances or protects the wood, and usually it does a little of both. Today, I'm going to really focus in on mixing oil finishes. Oils can be broken down into natural oils or more synthetic oils, like a varnish or maybe polyurethane. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, one reason I like to mix my own finishes, in particular oil finishes, I can control the cost a little bit better. And I can also control the ingredients that's in that finish. So I'm going to take you over on one of my lathes on a project I'm working on right now. And I promise you in this video, I'm going to show you some different applications for applying a finish that you can just mix up your oil finishes together. This is just a little cup with a little bit of that same blend. And it's mostly oil. It's not thin down very much. So what I'm going to do, uh, and I do this the first couple coats, I've got some mineral spirits right here, okay? And I'm going to just uh, add about the same amount of mineral spirits, paint thinner, into my mixture, right? And this will probably be enough to coat the inside several times and maybe a little bit on the back side here. So let me find a paper towel. And if you want to find a foam brush or some sort of brush to apply this, um, mix it up just a little bit. So the idea here in this mixture is so the first or second or third coats uh, soak into the wood a little bit more. And I'm going to really flood the surface here. And I try not to mix up more than I'm going to use uh, right now. And I can see in the, in the end grain right here how that really, really soaks into the wood. So I just kind of keep uh, wiping that and mixing it up a little bit and just watching it. So I'll put this on here and I'll just kind of watch what I'm doing here for a while and I can see in some areas on the inside here where there's end grain it's starting to soak in the wood a little bit more. Applying an oil finish is extremely easy. Very simple. You start by putting a nice thick coat on there and it's starting to dry a little bit so now what I'm going to do I'm going to wipe this down. And it's not all about what you leave on the wood, it's, it's what you remove. Turn my lathe speed down and just kind of wipe that off a little bit. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to step away and let that dry really well. I'll let that go for half an hour, an hour. I'll go do something else and I'll come back and I'll apply another coat. Now, I don't believe there is a more difficult or confusing topic than finishing. Whether you're a woodworker or a wood turner, you have a lot of options for uh, selecting a finish for your project. It depends on so many different things. The wood you're using, the uh, intended use of the, uh, the item that you're turning or working on. The appearance, uh, the protection, all different kinds of issues goes into making that selection for uh, picking the finish, okay? You want to protect the wood. That's part of it. You want to enhance the beauty of the wood. That's another part of it. You want to make that uh, project look a certain way. Well, uh, I like to mix finishes. And I'm concentrating on oils, what I consider an oil, whether it's a tongue oil or teak oil, uh, lots of different options there. 
linseed oil, another natural oil, we can blend those. And why would we do that? Well, in this video, I'm going to try to explain my reasoning for doing that particular uh, approach for finishing, blending those together. So we have drying oils and non-drying oils, okay? This is one that is one of those um, <laughs> pet peeves of mine, okay? Mineral oil is not a finish, okay? It's mineral oil. It evaporates, it disappears, it washes away. It's a non-drying oil. And I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to just eliminate that right off the bat. I'm not going to mix that with anything. Here's my pure tongue oil. Okay. And I get that from the, the real milk paint company. All right. That's pure tongue oil, natural tongue oil with no dryers or solvents in it. And if you're going to mix that with something, you need to mix it with something that's going to dry, in my opinion. It just takes way, way too long for pure tongue oil or natural tongue oil to dry. So we'll get back to that. There are two oils that I can think of that I have in my shop that are natural or pure oils. Okay, we have tongue oil and we have linseed oil. All right, now I was just looking at a can of uh, teak oil and I'm not sure, I need to read the label a little bit more carefully. I'm not sure if this is pure teak oil, okay? And what makes me think about this and wonder is on the, on the front of this, it says teak oil finish. Well, that's kind of a giveaway for, okay, this may not be totally 100% teak oil. I'm not sure where they would get that. You know, the tongue oil comes from the, uh, the China tree that, you know, produces these uh, tongue nuts or something, I don't know. And then linseed oil is, uh, is uh, from the flax seed. Okay, anyway, there's two, two oils that are natural. And what you can do is you can buy these kind of oils, these natural oils, and blend them together with something. Okay, and we'll talk about that mostly in this video. But you can also buy pre-mixed oils, okay? And let's just assume that this teak oil is a, is a pre-mixed finish. Uh, this is true oil. All these finishes I've got right here, um, they're not pure, okay? They got something mixed up with them. And obviously polyurethane or urethane uh, has different kinds of resins mixed up in that. Teak oil, tongue oil finish, which may not have any tongue oil in it, is a mixture. And they're okay. You know, they, they may be just fine right out of the can for what you're doing with your project. But we're focusing on mixing some of these finishes together. Okay. And what I'm going to show you right now is one of the, you know, the most famous mixtures of all, and that's uh, the Sam Malou finish that he used on his wonderful furniture. So I'm going to readjust here a little bit and uh, we'll bring up some, some finishes that he used and the mixtures that he came up with. Now I'm going to talk about Sam Malou, who was a woodworker. He made some beautiful, beautiful furniture and he's really well known for these wonderful rocking chairs, and I'll try to show you some pictures of some of, of Sam Maloof's work. And he, I think he worked primarily in walnut. I want to talk about the Sam Maloof blend, okay? And it's actually a two-part blend, and you've seen me use some of those kinds of blends in, in my videos. This is one of those blends. It's got uh, linseed oil and I'm not sure what else in there exactly. Um, but there's different reasons why I blend finishes together. Sometimes it's a matter of cost. Sometimes it's a matter of what I want that finish to do. And we'll get into that, I promise, in just a second. Now, Sam Maloof came up 
with these particular blends over a number of years. And what he uh, eventually arrived at was a two-part or two-step process. Step number one included urethane varnish, a semi-gloss, raw tongue oil, and boiled linseed oil. Okay, that was the first thing he applied to his, his furniture. Okay, he used raw tongue oil. Okay, well raw tongue oil doesn't dry very well, but he used boiled linseed oil and urethane varnish, which had dryers in them. So that was his reasoning there. Step number two, okay, this is a pretty uh, complicated process. Step number two involved raw tongue oil, boiled linseed oil, and shredded beeswax, okay? Um, and I'm going to take a little tangent here. Something I've been kind of experimenting with lately is a wax mixture that I came up with. And it's, it's just a, uh, the consistency of, you know, I don't know what, cream cheese or peanut butter or something like that. And uh, I'll show you this on one of my bowls that I'm working on over here. But he used uh, beeswax. And that was part of the final blend. But, you know, my objection to beeswax... Now, there are a lot of products on the market we can use for finishing that include wax. And my objection to wax, just straight wax, is that it's not going to be there in a year or two years or five years. Unless that piece just sits on a shelf and never gets handled, wax is going to uh, disappear shall we say. So what Sam Maloof did, he, he mixed tongue oil, linseed oil, and shredded beeswax, melted that all together in a, a mixture that he applied to his furniture. And his furniture was mostly hand rubbed. He would hand rub this into his uh, walnut chairs and they're very, very satin. Okay, the finish was not glossy at all. So. So let's take a time out and we'll go over on this walnut bowl I'm working on over here and we'll just uh, we'll apply some of my wax and I'll show you what I do. And I'll stop talking for a while. <laughs> All right, now earlier in the video you saw me working on this really, really pretty walnut bowl. And I'll show you what I've done so far. I thinned down some of my, my oil blend right here and thinned it down with some mineral spirits, some paint thinner, uh, about 50-50. I added uh, the same amount of mineral spirits as I had finish in there. Then um, I applied, oh, I don't know, three or four coats to that. Then I went back to my blend, which was not quite thinned down so much as that other concoction, and I put a couple coats on there of that. And it's really starting to sit on the surface a little bit, which I don't want to do too much. I'm just buffing that back a little bit. And trying to cut that gloss back a little bit, but I, I'm a big believer in sealing wood. Now, the next step is going to be to use some of my wax, okay, and I'll put up a, the formula for, for my mixture. Beeswax, which is melted. And turpentine, you don't have to use turpentine, but it was just sitting there, so I used some turpentine. And um, I also used some of that true oil finish in there. And I'll put up the uh, formula here so you can see exactly the, uh, the formulation for using this. So what I'm going to do, and I just, uh, I don't know, I'll just take some of this on my finger... So I'm going to just wipe that into the, the surface here. Take a little bit more. Now, 
one comment I'll make about this is that in this uh, little jar of wax, it's starting to skin over on the top, which tells me that it's, uh, it's drying, which is what I wanted to do. Now, so much of finishing is just common sense. Okay, let's just see what this looks like. And that looks pretty good right there. Now, I'm never in a big rush to finish something. I'm not making 200 bowls a week. <laughs> so I can leave this on this particular lathe until tomorrow, and I'll take a look at it. It's starting to really, really have a nice patina to it. I don't want something to sit on the surface and, uh, you know, just kind of be be too glossy. Now I've got the other side of this pretty much completed, so um, I'm also putting some of that wax on the outside there. So anyway, I might just uh, take my my dry paper towel and just buff that in a little bit. I'm not trying to put too much on there. That's going to be really pretty when it gets finished. And that's it. Okay, now I am very close to having this walnut bowl completed. And I'm really, really happy with the uh, surface, the patina I'm getting on that. You know, and I think it's sealed really, really well. I probably have seven or eight coats of oil or wax on there. And if you're doing hundreds of bowls, if you're a production turner, this may not be the way to go. Okay, I'm not in a rush. So uh, I think that's very close to, uh, to where I want it to be. All right, I'll just let, let this sit here for a day or so and see what that surface looks like. All right, now on to another topic, right? And that is why would we blend different finishes together? Why not just use uh, a polymerized tongue oil? That's perfectly fine. Now, if you're using tongue oil, it's really designed to sit below the surface of the wood. If you want more protection, you might use something else, or you might blend two things together. You might blend um, varnish or polyurethane along with this tongue oil. Okay, so I look at characteristics. What does tongue oil do? It's a great finish. It's a high-quality finish. It, it offers really nice water resistance. Uh, you building a cabinet in your bathroom, it might be a good choice for that humid uh, atmosphere, or maybe even something outside. I'm not sure if I'd use it outside. You know, I'd use linseed oil or something on, on furniture that sits outside, but you get the idea. Look at the characteristics, okay? So if I've got tongue oil, and I've got boiled linseed oil, okay, why would I blend them together? Okay, well, they're both drying oils, or they can be both drying oils. You know, high quality finish that sits below the surface, and here is a finish that, in my opinion, is pretty darn good, and uh, it's a lot cheaper. So I can uh, reduce the cost of this tongue oil by mixing linseed oil with it, okay? If I want more protection, like if you look at this nice workbench here, uh, I actually put some oil on this the other day, and then I put on top of that some wax, okay? So if I drop glue on this table, this uh, workbench, that glue's gonna dry and I can just chip it right off, okay? I may want something with a little bit more surface protection so I may go to a varnish or a polyurethane, okay? Um, and I might mix those with boiled linseed oil just to, to uh, increase the capacity or the volume of what I'm mixing. And this makes it a lot cheaper. Um, let me tell you a little story that's 20 or 30 years old. When I used to make breadboards, 
um, lots and lots of breadboards over the years. Sometimes I would go to my cabinet and I'd look and say, what do I have? Well, I have a half gallon of polyurethane, okay, and I've got some linseed oil. All right, so I'd mix those together just because they're there. Not very scientific, all right, I will admit that, but I'm using up uh, products that would otherwise maybe go bad after a number of months, and then I would mix some uh, paint thinner with those, those oils, all right, just to thin them down so they soak into the wood. And that's what I did on this bowl to begin with. I thinned down that, uh, that mixture so it soaks into the wood more. And anyway, it's really, really sealed well. And uh, yeah, so look at the characteristics. Some of these blends, uh, I don't care what it is, this tongue oil finish, okay, it's a blend, all right? Um, whether it has tongue oil in there or not, it does a certain uh, job, okay? It may give you really, really good protection. It's easy to apply, um, but there's lots of pre-mixed blends out there that you can just go to. Water Lux, Danish oil, uh, this one that we just mentioned, Minwax, uh, Watco, Danish oil, lots of different finishes to pick from. So look at the characteristics that you want on that piece of furniture or that bowl and mix them up or just uh, maybe buy one that's already pre-mixed. Okay, not that difficult. Just have to kind of understand what that uh, product is going to do. What is tongue oil going to do? Well, it needs to sit underneath the surface or else you're going to have a problem with that tongue oil beating up for a long, long time because it's not drying.